Do you know how to pray the seven spirits? Seven spirits of God over your children. Do you know? Wait a minute, because Jen, wait a minute. What you know about seven spirits? I thought there was just only one spirit. That's why you're here this morning. And I'm asking you, do you know the seven spirits of God? And do you know how to pray the seven spirits of God over, over the lives of your children? It's back to school time, at least for us here in New Jersey, okay? I know some of my cousins down south, y'all went back to, to, back to school in June. <laughs> but up here, we go back to school in September. Charter schools, they go back in, uh, in uh, August. Uh, other kids go back in uh, private schools and uh, regular school go back in September. So my little boy goes for orientation today. Okay, today's his first day. And so we want to pray over our babies and we need to understand. We need to understand how to pray. That's one of the problems why a lot of people don't get their answers first. But we need to know how to speak God's word over the lives of our children. I am wearing my t-shirts available on Etsy. No weapon from against me shall prosper. That is one of those scriptures. I pray daily over my life and over that of my children and over that of my husband and our household. So I am going to teach you how to pray the seven spirits of God over the lives of your children. And we're going to be talking about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach. And if you raise in the black church, a bendigo, aka a bad Negro. We're going to be talking from my book, In Christ I Am. If you don't have it, it is on sale. I put it on sale for back to school. This book is $9.99. It's a three book series, but but if you don't want to get the, the Bible study journal and the prayer book, you should get the prayer book get this book because it tells you about your identity in Christ and the things you need to be speaking to your kids and letting them know that they were beautifully created in the image of God. I want to thank you for your love and support. Good morning. It's Friday, honey. My window's open. I can feel fall in the air. I can feel fall, y'all. I love fall. Thank you for your love and support. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you have not checked your subscription, y'all. Check your subscription. I had a couple of people to email me saying, did I unsubscribe them? No, YouTube be unsubscribing people. So that's why you have to check to make sure you are subscribed. Be sure to check out my backup channel, Allegedly Janice. And of course, my Bible study channel that I need to get on back to. And uh, be sure to follow me on TikTok. I'm trying to get with the TikTok, okay? Because YouTube is slowly transforming into Instagram and TikTok and, how, TikTok and how they do their business. Be sure to follow me. And my niece told me, she said, put your, put your TikTok up here. But I forgot, girl. I forgot. Uh, Destiny, I forgot. Uh, follow me on TikTok. Uh, my name, Janice Hilton, I think. And of course, on Instagram. Okay. Seven spirits of God. We're going to talk about going back to school and how we need to pray over our children and how we need to speak over our children. We're going to begin with the story of Daniel. I love the story of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed Nigaro. Okay, that's if he was raised up in the black church. Well, his name is actually Abendigo. And so let me read this from Daniel chapter one from, from um, reading the, the Amplified version because the Amplified version is going to bring something out that the K King James version doesn't bring out. And it says, uh, the choice young men in the third year of reign of King Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles of the house of God. And he brought them into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and brought the articles into the treasury of his God. And the Babylonian king told Aphanes, the chief of his officials, to bring in some of his the sons of Israel, including from the royal family and from the nobles. 
young men without blemish and handsome in appearance. What? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Did Daniel, the writer of Daniel, talked about how somebody looked? But I thought the church said, no matter how you look, all that's important is that he's saved, child. So what if he ugly like Shaka Zulu? Go ahead and marry him and have some babies for him because the only thing that matters is that he's saved. All right, let's read on. So the king wanted young men without blemish. They had to be perfect. They had to be like the priests. Okay, no blemish, no, no sickness, no deformity in their skin, handsome in appearance, skillful in all wisdom, endowed with intelligence and discernment, and quick to understand, competent, competent, competent to stand in the presence of the king. You know what that means? Everybody can't go stand in the presence of the king. Mm -hmm. And able to serve in the king's palace, he also ordered Asphanaz to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned a daily ration for them from his finest food and from the wine which he drank. They were to be educated and nourished this way for three years so that at the end of that time, they were prepared to enter the king's service. Among them from the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, uh, and uh, uh, Azariah. The commander of the officials gave them Babylonians' name, Daniel to be named Belteshazzar, Hananiah, he named Shadrach, Meshach, he named Meshach, and Azariah, he named a bandigo or a bad negro, according uh, to the black church. So let me go ahead and explain what happened here. What happened here was we know that the first king of Israel was Saul, who was tall and good looking, okay? I love me a tall, good looking man. His heart was not for God and God said, he found a man after his own heart uh, in that of David, who was ruddy, my cousin David, and good looking, okay? You, know, you notice how God kept saying they're good looking, okay? Well, David became king and uh, there was a war in, um, in, in Israel at that time between the tribes because King Saul was of the tribe of Benjamin and the kingdom was supposed to be passed down to his son, sons. But we know that, that, that King Saul and his sons were killed on the day of battle. God chose David of the house of Judah, okay? I love me some David, okay? Now, God, uh, David sinned against God with Bathsheba, and God told David, David, you sinned against me. The sword will not depart from your house. If you can tell me, do not use Google. What did God mean when he said the sword shall not depart from David's house? What happened? Mm -hmm. David of the tribe of Judah, who is Judah? I still got problems still this today, okay? Flip on back to the book of Genesis in where I talk about Leah, uh, who who was ugly, Jacob, and Rachel, her beautiful, young, sexy, good figure sister. Judah was the fourth son for Leah and Jacob. It was Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah. Leah says, okay, this is, I ain't going to lay up with Jacob no more because Jacob don't love me. God established his descendants and the, the, the priestly and the, the king, not the priestly, the king's line, okay? God promised the king's line to Judah. So even though Saul became king of Benjamin, 
the line was established for the Messiah through Judah. What do Judah mean? Praise. Send Judah first. Judah means praise. Okay. David become king. He had all these sons, but God chose Solomon of uh, 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 Bathsheba, you know, the baby mama that David knocked up and killed her husband. Okay. And so God chose Solomon because God say, I love me, Solomon. Solomon name means beloved of God. And guess what the Bible say about Solomon? <laughs> guess what the Bible say? Solomon was good looking. Okay. He was good looking. Okay. Solomon messed up. Solomon was the wisest, foolish man that ever lived. Somebody said it. I'm going to always give you credit, even though I don't remember who said it. But but it was it, it's powerful because he's wise, but he was stupid. He was stupid because he allowed Solomon, allowed his wives to turn his heart away from God. Hello for the deep folks who are out here marrying heathens. Marry people who don't believe in your God. At the end of Solomon's life, Solomon realized, if you read in the book of Ecclesiastics, he says, here is the, the matter of it all. Obey God. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. I think it's Ecclesiastes chapter one. Obey God. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, I believe. Mm -mm. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, when all has been said, been heard, the end of the matter is, is this up here? Let's put this up so y'all can see. Uh, the end of the matter is this, okay? The end of the matter is this. Come on, preacher. Read the Bible. When all is said, it has been heard. The end of the matter is this. Fear God. What does fear God mean? Reverence, respect, honor. Amplifies his worship him with all filled reverence, knowing that he is almighty God and keep his commandments. How many of you know the 10 commandments has been fulfilled and we now have two commandments and the apostle Paul brought it down to one for this applies to every person for God will bring every act to judgment, every hidden and secret thing, whether it is good or evil. Okay. Solomon turns the throne over to his stupid son, Rehoboam. Okay. The elders came to Rehoboam and said, Rehoboam, this is, this is for y'all. You know, the people that come over here in my comments. Talk about don't listen to Auntie Jen. Sister Jen, she's stupid. She don't know what she's talking about. And you you ain't got no proof of what you're saying. The elders came to Rehoboam, Rehoboam, do A, B, C, and D. Guess what stupid young Rehoboam did? He listened to his friends and, 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 and said, uh-uh, your father was hard. You going to be harder on them. While the elders said, Rehoboam, listen to us. Your father had to build the, the temple, and so he had to tax the people and work the people very hard. The people are tired. Give the people a break. Don't do that. You know what he did? Rehoboam listened to his friends who were just like him. And so God gave a prophecy that the kingdom would be torn in Two, and this is where we have Israel and Judah. So when you read in the Bible, the king of Judah and the king of Israel, you're wondering, well, wait a minute, 
isn't it one kingdom it was one kingdom split in two you have the southern kingdom uh which was ruled by jeroboam or rehoboam judah and uh, uh benjamin i believe if i remember correctly and then the other 10 kingdoms was given to jeroboam talk about a fool jeroboam was a fool too okay don't mix the names up rehoboam uh son of solomon jeroboam okay isaiah gave a prophecy and said because you disobey god uh the the word that your kingdom is going to be torn in half and in in uh in isaiah 36 39 and 6 behold the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried away to babylon babylon nothing shall be left left says the lord and they shall take away some of your sons who will be descend from you whom you will beget, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Babylon. You see that? Let's flip on back over to Daniel chapter 1. Mm, Daniel chapter 1, the prophecy was fulfilled. Okay, get your, get your Bibles. This is old time Bible study. So in Daniel chapter one, a hundred years after so, uh, uh, the prophet is uh, Isaiah gave this prophecy, the prophecy was fulfilled. Ah, uh, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem, besieged it. The Lord gave Jeho Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles of the house of the Lord. And he brought them into the land of Shinar to the house of his God and brought the articles. And the Babylonian king of Alpha, as the chiefs of his official, bring in some of the sons of Israel, including some of, from the royal family and from the nobles, young men without blemish and handsome in appearance, skillful in all wisdom, endowed with intelligence and discernment and quick to understand, competent to stand in the presence of the king and able to serve the king's palace. because of disobedience okay now you know the story daniel shadrach meshach abednego is in uh babylon and and they vow not to sin against god and this is what we want our children to do right we want to raise them in the way that no matter what comes no matter what goes they go they're not gonna sin against god i teach my kids if anything happened and i can't get to you call jesus let me tell you you better call that name jesus you may call G. I'm teaching little Michael. Lexi got it. Little Michael, call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus. Okay. And so while they were in the king's palace, we know this. Everybody should know the story of Daniel. Uh, they wanted to give him food from the king's table, which means that meat was sacrificed to God. And and the king's the, and, and Daniel went to the eunuchs of the house. You know what eunuchs are? Eunuchs were men that had their organs cut off because the king didn't want them to focus on anything else love sex wife none of, uh -uh, your full focus is on me david uh daniel went to the the the, the master of the eunuchs and said listen we don't we can't eat that food it's against our god it's against our faith to eat the food that sacrificed to the animal to the gods give us paws or peas and veggies and at the the end of the time the bible says D daniel and his friends were wiser smarter and had more wisdom than anybody else when they went in before the king. God, God showed Daniel and his friends favor. I say all that I've said to say this, that God is going to show your kids favor. You must speak the favor of God upon the lives of your children because the seeds you plant today is the harvest you will reap tomorrow. The Bible Proverbs, one of my favorite scriptures, it says that death and life is in the power of the tongue 
you go have what you speak. And so there are some things that's going on and happening in your life right now. And you need to look back and ask yourself, well, what did I say? You will never hear me speak negatively about my kids. You will never hear me say my kids are bad. You will never hear me say my daughter is hot. She's a hot behind. You will never hear me say that little Michael's back. Yes, that in Jesus' name. You will always hear me speak the word of God, the favor of God over the lives of my children. You will always hear me speak Wherever my kids go, they are blessed. Wherever my babies go, they have favor with God and with man. Everybody loved my kid, love my babies. Everybody is just in awe of how well they are. The Bible tells us that Daniel, let me try to find it. Daniel and his friends, when they came before the king, they were wiser than everybody else. And you know what the king did? Because they were wiser than everybody else, they excel among everybody else. Listen, those boys were put in leadership positions. They were elders. They were they were over other people. Why? Because the favor of God is upon the lives of those boys. And what I'm telling you this morning is you need to also speak the favor of God over the lives of your children. And you need to speak the, the seven spirits. What is the seven spirits? I'm glad you asked in the book of Isaiah chapter 11, one to three. Let's go on over there. Okay, Isaiah 11. We're going to stick with the amplified version of the Bible, okay? Because it makes it a little clearer. Ooh, share screen. Isaiah chapter 11, 1 to 3. Righteous reign of the branch, then a shoot, the Messiah, will spring from the stock of Jesse, David's father. Remember I said God promised David that his seed or his descendant would sit on the throne forever. Well, here is the fulfillment of it. Then a shoot, the Messiah, will spring from the stock of Jesse, David's father, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. Here are the seven spirits, and the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Uh, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge of the re uh, reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord, and he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make decisions by what his ears hear. This is talking about the Messiah. We know the Messiah as Jesus. And so these are the seven spirits, and we need to speak those seven spirits over the lives of our children. I speak it every day over Lexi and over little Michael. The spirit of counsel, the spirit of the Lord, spirit of understanding, the spirit of understanding and counsel and wisdom and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I speak favor in my kids' life. I speak Proverbs 11 and um, tw uh, 21 and 11 into my kids my king, my children's heart, my babies have favor wherever they go. Everywhere my kids go, everybody love them. Everybody show them favor. God will allow people to see the anointing and favor on my kids. Let me tell you, little Michael's in pre-K three and the last day, the teacher, the, the teacher in the age said, Miss Thomas, we was, we was saying what we think the kids going to be. You know what they said about little Michael when he took this picture? You know what they say? Presidente. Mm -hmm. They said little Michael is going to be president. He's, 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 president stop he went to pre-k four and it was time for for you to do the 
one school nor in nor mm, stupid i don't know who came up with that but that's stupid okay and so you have to fill out the school registration and and the the, the teachers and miss thompson we, we we school you're gonna say little michael and so well what we, we said well you know we have the charter school one of the top schools we want to uh thinking about our neighbors think trying to get her to his daughter in there and and she said you know what she said to me she said no miss thompson no 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 michael don't go charter michael go private school do you understand private school i was in the parking lot uh last year and this lady came and she said you michael thompson's mother at the school i said yes i'm michael thompson's mother she said let me tell you whatever you're doing keep doing it that little michael thompson he's a good boy and she said he's so respectful and he says please and thank you i work in the cafeteria he said please and thank you please and thank you say i i you don't hear that these days and and i was telling mike and say how oh, I speak the word of God over the children, over the lives of my children. In this book, In Christ I Am, how we need to teach them who they are, how we need to pray that our children's heart are turned to God. Did they not say in the book of Deuteronomy, when you sit at your table, teach your children the word of God. When you walk out the house, teach your children the word of God. When you come home, teach your children the word of God. I speak the blessings of God over the lies. My children are blessed going and blessed coming. My children blessed in the field and blessed in the city. My children blessed on the school bus and in school. My kids shall be the head and not the tail. My babies are above and not beneath no weapon form against my children shall prosper everybody love them they have favor where they go and wherever they go they are the head of their class it's easy for them to learn my kids are blessed so what i want to know is mamas and daddies and aunts and uncles and guardians and aunts and uncles and what are you speaking in your children me and mccoy who was sent the other day and you know was saying how we have brought food and little michael didn't want it, he wanted burger king. and so you know we have it uh, once a week you could get some burger king pizza whatever he well he didn't want the chinese food so i said okay you know you get your whatever and so i was telling my girl she asked him the next day how did little michael like the food because i have to recook some of the stuff when i come home and uh i said oh he didn't want it, he wanted it. she said he's spoiled i said no he's not spoiled he's blessed <laughs> and i don't think she meant anything by it okay i just know when i'm in my presence in my presence you don't say nothing negative about my kids because people's giving life and you got snatched that thing out of the atmosphere and cast it down in jesus name now i don't care what you said behind my back but in my presence you will not speak anything negative about my children and i will not open up my mouth and speak nothing negative about my babies you're wondering mom and daddy and uncle's garden why is your child bad what you've been saying have you been saying he's so bad terrible tools uh uh no 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 we're not speaking that over my kids my kids didn't have no trouble lexi and michael no no we don't believe in terrible tools we believe in being blessed we believe in be behaving excellently when you study and read on david the bible says that david behaved himself excellently guess what my kids they behave themselves excellently i was in walmart one time when they came up to me you alexia mama you look just like lexi mom let me tell you you a good mom okay <clears throat> Lexi is so respectful. She's so obedient. And, and she, uh, she's always clean. You dress her so nice and clean. Let me tell you, wherever I, my babies go, they're blessed. They got favor on their lives. You know why? Because I speak it. Whatever you want to see in the lives of your children speak. And I always say, I give them a 10% window. Because you know, they're kids. They're learning. Okay. They're going to make mistakes. And, you know, sometimes they're going to do stuff they're not supposed to do. That's the 10% window. Okay, that's all they get. But at the end of the day, I get my oil. I go through my house. I anoint my kids. I lay hands on Little Michael will come to mommy, lay hands on me and pray over me. He loves it. And I speak what thus 
saith the Lord over the lives of my children. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. And I pray, spirit of the Lord, rest upon your children. The spirit of wisdom will rest upon your children. The spirit of understanding will rest on their children. In school, they will understand. It is easy to learn. It is easy for them to understand what the teacher is saying. They will not struggle in school. They get it. They understand it. Okay? Uh, the spirit of counsel and strength. They will listen to counsel. Let me tell you, in Proverbs 24, I believe, it says, in the multitude of counselor, there is safety. Because I had my dad, Pastor Rasha, and I listened to his counsel. I didn't make a mess of my life. I had a baby at 16. But baby, after that, that was it. I I, 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 I was on the straight and narrow. Why? Because I had the spirit of counsel in my life. So pray that your children will listen to counsel when you try to talk to them. You give them understanding. Less yesterday, little Michael had tutor, and he didn't really, you know, when he wanted to just relax, and you know, I had to call little Michael. Mike, you need to talk to little Michael. And, and little Michael, Big Mike said to Michael, Michael, you know, we have to have balance in our lives. And Mike asked him, what does balance mean? And this is what he did. Balance. Balance. And dad asked, well, I explain what balance means. And he said, a little homework, a little reading, a little TV, a little bit tablet. I said, that's right. That is balance. We need to have balance in our lives. A lot of us coming out the black church was messed up. I don't know about nobody else now, okay? Because we didn't have balance. Our mamas and grandmothers, that were, those of us who was raised in the church didn't have balance. And it's up to us to have balance. It is up to us to teach our children their identity in Christ. Tell them who they are. Ah, uh, one of the things that, and I'm done after this, the king of Babylon did was what he did. He renamed, he renamed the boys. He renamed the boys. You know, we in these schools, these people be trying to put stuff on your kids. Mm -hmm. I was did Lexi renewal yesterday, and you know, ladies gonna talk about oh, I'm gonna put it in her form. Oh, that you know, when somebody talk about her or something or laugh at her, she get upset. I, 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 do I have your permission to put that in her form? No, you do not. I said that's everybody. Don't you get upset if somebody talk about you, laugh about you? So no, we're not gonna put that in her form. No, we're not gonna put that. That's everybody. You don't get upset. You know, I'm my daughter's advocate. You're not gonna put nothing on her that I don't I, I don't prove. And then when she was coming up, they was trying to put other stuff so we could say she have autism, so you could get some money. I don't want no money that bad. No, she's not autistic. She don't have autism. You're not gonna put that on my child. That's not her 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 diagnosis. Now I'm all for there's a medical issue, yes, but you're not gonna put no extra stuff on my kids. And let me tell you, these kids are going to school. That's why I need to talk to these kids because what, what King Nebuchadnezzar did was he changed their names. He, he was trying to get rid of their Jewish faith and their Jewish identity. This is why our kids need to know who they are. You need to tell them. You need to tell them that they're bought with a price. You need to tell them that they were beautifully formed in the image of God so our girls don't need to go get BBLs. You need to tell them that they are a friend of God. You need to tell them that they are a child of God. You need to tell them that they are just and they are holy and they are good children. They're not bad. Stop telling your kids they're bad. Stop telling your little girls that they're hot in the pants. What do you think is going to happen? And so Nebuchadnezzar, what he did was he changed his, the boy's name. He changed da Daniel's name, which means God is my judge, to Belteshazzar, which means Bel, protect his life. He changed Hananiah, yeah, which means Yahweh is gracious, to Shadrach, the command of Aku, the Babylonian. He changed Mishael, 
who which means who is what God is to Misha who which means who is what Aku is and then he changed Azariah which means Yahweh is my helper to Abednego which means servant of Nebo after the second greatest Babylonian god Nebo So you don't allow people to put anything on your kids or speak anything in your kids. You got to plant that seed, baby, and you must water it and tell them who they are. I absolutely love you. I adore you. Pick this book up. It's on sale for $19.99. It talks everything about in here about, Lord, here go the people, uh, who they are. Crucified with crime. I'm just going through. I am forgiven. The kids need to know their faith. Belong to God. I seal with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Seed of Abraham. Redeemed from the curse of the law. A child of God. The righteousness of Christ. Okay. Taught of God. My kids are taught of the Lord. My kids are the apple of God's eyes. My kids are liked by God. Okay. My kids are prayed for. My kids are provided for by God. My kids are kept by God. My kids are planted in God. My kids are favored. My kids are protected. My kids are overcomer. My kids are healthy. My kids are wise. My kids are victorious. My kids are growing in Christ. My kids are called worthy to walk of God. My kids are humble. My kids are worshiper. My kids are prosperous. My kids are Christ's helper. Do your kids know who they are? You know, we have all these terms, diva, is strong, independent, black woman, and all this stuff ain't got nothing to do with what God says. And let me tell you, you better plant that seed because what you want to flourish in the lives of your children is the seed. But not only that, in the lives of our lives and in the lives of me and my husband, because if we wasn't speaking it and believing it in our lives, we couldn't speak it and believe it in my children's life. I love you. I got to go, girl. I love you. I love you. Let me know what you think. Come on back. Come back. Come back. I have a little tea on ready to love. I can't believe it, girl. Love you. Be sure to subscribe. Bye.